Well, I'm David Salem, happy to MC another episode of Real Vision and especially happy to have a fresh opportunity to compare notes with one of my very favorite people in the world, inside or outside finance, uh, Anders Brownworth. Um, Anders, I was thinking of all the conversations you and I have had over the years. <laughs> I think this is actually the first one we've ever done remotely, either by phone or, or video, because we always get together in person. We usually go for a walk and we compare notes. And it's been a great joy and a privilege for me to do that with you over the years. But there's a specific reason why we're doing this virtually for our friends at Real Vision, which is that you've become kind of a goat of sorts, right? You know, we saw Alice and Felix in Tokyo and of course, Kip Chogi win a second gold medal, and we've got Brady here in New England. But you're sort of one of the goats of Real Vision because you've got you've done one and only one video so far for Real Vision. It was a phenomenal demo of how a blockchain gets constructed. And last time I checked, it has sort of the highest ratio of votes of you know thumbs up to thumbs down in Real Vision history, subject to a respectable minimum. So all credit to you for that. And it's on really on the strength of that success that Real Vision wanted to bring you back and to have you provide a real-time demo of another really crucially important aspect of our increasingly digitized world. And that would be, how do you actually build a smart contract? So, to, you know, to your credit and our delight, you've agreed to do that right now. We're gonna walk through a real-time demo. I encourage anyone who hasn't seen the first episode featuring you and Ash Bennington, where you do the blockchain construction, go back and watch that, maybe before you watch the demo that's about to unfold. So, Anders, by prior agreement in an effort to sort of maximize the time for your demo and hopefully for some follow-up Q&A after you're through it, uh, I'm gonna just sort of turn things over to you again by prior agreement. Um, I might interject with a question or a comment for clarification purposes as you roll through it, but with profuse thanks for agreeing to do this, over to you. Thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to be back. And um, I, I'll just start this off by saying I'm I'm an engineer, and uh, I've, I'm very interested in these technologies. And uh, I, I have learned quite a bit from you on those walks around the pond. Uh, and so I, I, you know, I know uh, next to nothing about finance, and and you've been very patiently uh, answering my question. So I hope to, uh, re you know, repay the favor as it were. Um, so, yeah, so I, if, if you've taken a look at the, the previous talk, the, the, the arc of it was essentially, why do we trust uh, digital assets? Like, what is it there that you can really take home and, and, and trust? And I did that by demonstrating a, a, an example blockchain. And I showed how uh, a, a sample token might work on that blockchain. It's a proof of work blockchain. All proof of work blockchains need a, uh, a base asset. So we looked at creating one of those and we looked at how you might uh, move that token around or, or, you know, in a sense, move money around. Well, there are other things you can put on a blockchain. Uh, you don't necessarily have to just have a single token. Uh, you might want to pose something uh, to the chain that uh, looks more like executable code that you could use in place of a standard stock uh, transaction. Uh, and in fact, this is the way that it works. So if you uh, create a transaction to send money from A to B, you're following a very simple kind of intuitive set of rules. I no longer have it. You do. Uh, net, we've no money is gained or lost in the system. We've just sort of, you know, transferred the power to spend that money from one person uh, to another or really from one private key to another. So. What we're going to do here is uh, pose a, uh, a smart contract, which is a little bit more complex than that. It doesn't simply just move money from one place to another. It could do many other things as well. We'll start with a very simple example. I promise, uh, very, very easy to follow. Uh, if, if we switch to the screen here, uh, I'm going to uh, just take a look at a, I've, I've made a, a, a sample smart contract here that I'll call moolah, okay? So, so you know, fake money or something. So this is a smart contract. 
and uh, as you can see, uh, there's some there's some license uh, stuff you want to put up top, and you want to say what version of the compiler you're using. That's kind of basically boilerplate. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe a contract here called Moolah. Okay, and it's everything between the opening uh, little bracket here and the closing one, wherever it is, uh, down a little bit. Um, and what we're going to do in this contract, because this is an ERC-20 coin that we're going to make, is we are going to define some, some standard uh, uh, functions that we have to define in order to make it a uh, an ERC-20 coin. And particularly that is we need to give it a name. Uh, we, it has to have a symbol, uh, just that, that was one of the things that they put in there. There's a number of decimals. And, and this is interesting because uh, all of the numbers, and you'll see this, all of the numbers are, are really just integers. And when we present these numbers, we want to place a decimal somewhere. And we're doing this all in integers to make the math exact. You don't want some floating point operation to, to overflow or be slightly under that might change some of the least significant digits. So we'll do everything as integers, and then we'll just pick a point where we put the decimal kind of arbitrarily. To give you an idea, right, the dollar decimal point is, is two, two units in, two, uh, two uh, characters in, so that we can have, uh, you know, 100 pennies for one dollar. Uh, Anders, can I just... Please. Sorry, can I just jump in with a clarification? Maybe I'll ask the guys to jump off of your screen and show me. I'm holding, I don't think you can see me, but I'm holding something that's <laughs> well known to the audience. It's a single dollar bill, right? So bear with me here Be really quickly, but this is essentially a contract. And some would say it's not a very smart contract because because it's been debased by 99% over the last 108 years. <laughs> but we can come back to that in the Q&A. Uh, but it's a contract because it's sort of a bare instrument. And it says, if you hold this piece of paper, carefully engineered by the Mint, uh, you can exchange it for something of value. Before 1971, you could literally exchange it for gold. Nixon closed the gold window 50 years ago this month. It's no longer exchangeable for gold, but it's a bare asset. It's essentially, I'm, I'm overgeneralizing, but we have to for purposes of today's recording. Um, it's, a, it's a contract, if you will. So the smart contracts, and I know people are, now we can go back to your screen and the code. People are looking at it, it's in black and white. They can see the word solidity in the upper left-hand corner. You've mentioned ERC-20. So solidity is what's called, of course, Turing complete programming language. We can come back to what Turing completeness means. Uh, and it's been used by Ethereum to set forth a number of standards so that the Ethereum protocol can be useful to the world. And ERC-20 would be an Ethereum request for comment. So that would be one of the first sets of standards that the Ethereum Foundation, really the community, it started taking shape in 2015, right at the beginning, the dawn of Ethereum, when Vitalik Buterin introduced it to the world. And then it was sort of, it was launched after two years of back and forth, give and take and refinement. ERC-20 was launched as a way to standardize the creation of smart contracts of which, and this may be confusing to some viewers, final point and then back to you, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies are essentially a subset of smart contracts. In the same way that a dollar is its currency, it's called fiat currency, it's sort of a contract, almost a social contract. So too what we're gonna walk through, a smart contract, sorry, a cryptocurrency is a subset of smart contracts. In Ethereum land, tokens, particularly the cryptocurrencies and crypto tokens that you can create, tend to be standardized around ERC-20 because it's a convenient way for people to achieve efficiency in creating these digital assets. All right, that was a mouthful. Back to you. Correct me if I said anything that you thought was an error and then proceed. No, that's, that's a very helpful context. Uh, we joke that uh, smart contracts are neither smart nor contracts. Um, and uh, so, yeah, don't, don't, don't get lost in this. Uh, the ERC-20 standard is the 20th Ethereum 
you know, improvement, essentially. Uh, it's a f improve, you know, request for comment, but uh, th this is essentially how things get voted on. Um, so th this is just a standard. Why might you do this? Well, if you have, uh, if you're running an exchange and lots of people come with all their different uh, tokens and they all work differently, it's really tough for an exchange to, to you know, use it or a wallet manufacturer to have a wallet that works. So having a standard like this, uh, you know, some very basic things, the name, the symbol, as we're looking on the screen uh, and the decimals and the total supply. These are all things that you you really want to know as a uh, wallet implementer, for example. An exchange, of course, is just a wallet. It's a giant wallet. Um, so. Uh, a number of these, uh, you know, kind of standards and, and what we're doing here, you'll you'll just see is is kind of too simplex too, too simplistic. OK, but but these are the you know, this is kind of the very basics of what you would need to do. And by the way, I, uh, we could uh, touch on it later. But if you were to actually make an ERC-20 contract in the real world, I would not. Uh, implement it the way I'm showing you here. There are much more safe ways to to do this, um, in, in particular using libraries, but we, we can ignore that. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to like and subscribe for more crypto related content. Also, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com slash crypto.